Hi everyone, it's Nicole McGuirk for Lawn Fawn, and today I have a card featuring the brand new Extra Special Easter stamp set and coordinating dies. This stamp set comes with some cute little bunnies as well as an Easter basket, eggs, and tulips. So lots of fun ways to make Easter cards or great springtime designs. To start my card, I am stamping several of the images from the stamp set on some Nina Solar White cardstock using the Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And this is because I'm going to be coloring in my images with Copic markers. I like to stamp most of the, most of the designs that I think I'm going to be using for the card at one time so that I can color them all in at once, die cut them, and have them ready to go when I assemble the card. Sometimes you might not have everything you need and you'll have to go back and stamp a few additional pieces and I had to do that here, but for the most part I like to try to get them all stamped at once. To color in my bunny, I wanted to keep him fairly, I wanted him to look white, but I didn't want him to look flat. I've already colored in his little bow there with some aqua colors, and so to give him a little bit of shading and color, I'm using some cool gray markers in the C00, C1, or C2 there, just to give him a little bit of that dimension. I used a little R20 in his ear and on his nose and then went over it with a little bit of one of the cool gray markers to mute it a little bit so it wasn't such a bright, vibrant pink. And then I'm using three shades here for the tulips, the green part. YG21, 25, and 17. Those are about my three favorites for doing um, kind of bright, very grassy green colors either for fl floral leaves, stems, or grass. And then I'm using three shades here in red violets for my pink or purplish tulip. And I'm using a couple of yellows and an orange for this other tulip here. Going over it as many times as I need to to build up the color and get exactly the look that I want. I went over this one quite a few times to kind of get that variation in color, smoothing it out with my lightest tone. Now before I move on to that last tulip, I was trying to decide what color I wanted to use for it, and I went ahead and skipped over to my egg. I'm using a lot of the same colors that I'm using in other parts of the design, so I knew I was going to make one of the Easter eggs yellow, so I went ahead and colored that in as well as an aqua one. I like to try to stick to not adding too many additional colors. This card does have quite a few simply because I wanted the eggs to have um, lots of different colors. But I like to kind of stick with the same color scheme throughout. I decided to do a little yellow, orange, and red for this tulip and change it up. Where so much of the design is really pastel, this is going to be a nice bright pop of color with this particular tulip. And that addition of the red, I think, really adds to the entire design of the card. Again, going over it as many times as I need to to get the right coloring. Go ahead and color in this last Easter egg with those same red violets that I used for one of the tulips using all three shades and really blending that out. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and color in the Easter basket. And instead of making the bow match the bunny, I went with the red-violet colors for the bow here. Like to mix it up just a little bit. And then I'll color in all of the eggs, or I guess I'm gonna do the basket first, sorry. I'm gonna use some browns here. I'm going to start with my lightest brown color and just color in a nice base color for all of that. Then I've gone in with my darkest color actually and I'm just really tracing over most of the lines and then on the handle pulling in some of that dark brown. And then I went in with my mid-tone color and smoothed out some of those darker areas. Went back with my lightest color to really smooth out anything that had maybe too much definition 
smooth out any of those harsh coloring lines. And then I did go back in with my darkest color and my mid-tone color again and add another layer of color just to give that a little bit more depth and dimension. Then again, I'm going to go in with the same colors basically that I used before to color in my Easter eggs. I am going to introduce a couple of new colors. I wanted to make sure I had lots of color in this Easter basket. Used the, went ahead with the colors that I already knew. And then for those final two, I'm going to color in one kind of an orangey color. And then my last one will be more of the purples instead of so pink. And I'll finish coloring that one in. And then all of these are colored and ready to be die cut. I'm going to grab the coordinating dies and I'm going to snip them apart with some wire cutter scissors and then place them over the um, stamped images and run them through my machine. Now before I do that, I am going to show, I'd already done it at this point, but I ended up needing more tulips so I thought I would go ahead and show the rest of the coloring. And I made these kind of a peachy pink color and I really, really like that. I liked it so much I colored two of them with this particular color scheme and then I'll die cut those as well. So those were the two additional pieces that I needed for my card. So here is how the initial pieces that I colored or colored looked. I like to die cut as many at one time as possible. That way I can pop all of those out and then and then any images that I have repetitions of, I can go ahead and die cut those again and again as needed. So in this case, I die cut everything once, popped all of those out, and then I'm going to need to die cut the egg and the tulip a couple more times. So I'll just run those through my machine until I have everything die cut and then I can start assembling my card. Now while I have my die cutting machine out, I am going to go ahead and die cut some of the elements that I need or some of the rest of the elements I need for my card. I'm using the largest A2 size stitched rectangle die to die cut some of the um, Night size patterns paper, which is going to be the sky for my card. And then I'm using some of the Monami paper, this aqua, and I am die cutting it using the same stitched rectangle die. This is going to be the grass and the landscape for the design. So I die cut it with the stitched rectangle so that it'll have that stitching along the sides and bottom. Then I'm taking the grassy border and creating a couple of grassy um, pieces or borders to lay across the bottom of my card to tuck all of the elements in so it kind of looks like a nice Easter scene. Now on top of the grassy borders I did go ahead and use a stitched hillside border to die cut a landscape to go behind. After I had those initial two grassy borders I decided it was there was too much blue sky if that makes sense and I felt like it needed a little bit more, but I didn't really want that grassy look. So here's what it looked like initially. And I just felt like that there was too much sky. So there's that stitched hillside border in the background. Now to add something to that sky, I've stamped my greeting, have an extra special day from the same stamp set that I used for all of the other elements. And then I can start assembling my card. For the stitched hillside border background, I'm going to adhere that directly to the stitched rectangle. I am moving it up a little bit just to kind of, again, not have so much blue sky up there in the background. Then for my initial grassy border base, I applied that with some foam adhesive. This is going to give just a tiny bit of dimension. And then for my other grassy border, I'm going to adhere it directly to the other one. Then I can start tucking in all of the different elements. I'm just applying some adhesive and that way it gives me two different layers 
in order to adhere all of these fun little elements. So it really looks like it's a nice little outdoor Easter scene with the bunny and the basket and the eggs and everything tucked into the grass as well as these florals. Now anything that is not tucked behind that first grassy border is going to need a little foam adhesive. You probably saw me put that foam adhesive behind the top of the tulip. That way it lies flat with the card and doesn't, or it's flush with that layer, I guess is what I want to say, instead of kind of flopping there or having to adhere it where it'll bend. So anything that's in this first grassy layer is going to need a little foam adhesive to help it pop up. If it overlaps where that first grass or that back grassy border is that has the foam adhesive tucking in all the Easter eggs. I love how the grassy border really, it just adds to the whole look of the Easter design. And here are those additional two tulips that I colored and die cut. I really like the addition of those and it fills out the entire design really nicely. Now once I have everything adhered, I took the Wink of Stella Clear Glitter Brush Marker and colored it in over the Easter eggs and the bows. I really think that is a fun little touch, especially for the Easter eggs, and you can definitely see the sparkle and shine a little bit better in real life, but it adds a nice little touch to the design of the card. Now, as I was working on this, I realized I still thought the sky had a little bit too much white space, especially with so much going on down below, but I didn't want to overwhelm it. So I went ahead and adhered a googly eye to my bunny and then I grabbed some sequins from Pretty Pink Posh, and I'm going to sprinkle those throughout the design. I hope you've enjoyed this video showcasing the brand new extra special Easter stamp set and dies from Lawn Fawn. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.